very, very dear friends, distinguished guests, presidents, friends of Israel, friends of the Jewish people, chairman of Yad Vashem, President Kwasniewski and Mesic, Professor Pizar, Roman, Tolka Arad, friends, Professor Porat, and all the teachers and educators and lecturers who came from all over the world to participate in these two days of research in Yerushalayim, in Yad Vashem, to discuss the very important issue. Important today, maybe more than 60 years ago. How to teach, how to educate, how to bring into minds and hearts of mankind the tragedy of the Jewish people and the tragedy of mankind in all Holocaust. I want to start with a very optimistic point and now Dr. Pizar, my dear friend Sam, you will see there is a God in heaven. I came here, I didn't know who will be the members of the panel. But I did know that tonight, somewhere in the state of Israel, I have to officiate a wedding ceremony as a rabbi to a young boy his first name is Yaniv. His last name is Priester. He is the grandson of Roman Priester. He is the groom. So can you imagine, 65 years later, Roman Priester, a very famous survivor of Auschwitz, me, survivor of Buchenwald. 65 years later, we meet in an independent, Jewish state, by all these questions and in spite of all the obstacles and debates, this is our national home. And we meet in our home, the two of us, today, exactly today, I didn't know we will meet in Yad Vashem, to show and to emphasize that the chain is unbroken. And the dynasty is going forever. This is the main lesson of these two days in my eyes. To put it in a real proportion, after Holocaust, and after losing a third part of our nation, we built a home. We came here with nothing. Very few friends very few friends, surrounded with very many enemies. Seven countries who declared a war against our dependence, independence, which we don't know in the history of the last century or two centuries. How many states were being founded in the last two centuries with no war? with no debate, no battlefields, like we. 65 years, 62 years at least, not even one day of rest. Take the headlines. They don't let us one quiet night to sleep. What are we less than all the other nations in Europe, in Asia, in America, and in Africa? They have their independence so na naturally, so spontaneously, so understood. Did we contribute to mankind during the history? Less than all the countries, let's say in Africa, 50 years ago, none of them almost was independent. Germany late Italy, mainly France, United Kingdom, even the Netherlands, Italy, in Angola, Ethiopia, Abyssinia. They ruled over South Africa, Africa. And today all of them are independent. 
And that's how it has to be. If there was a battlefield, it was inside. Belgic Congo, Zaire of today, Kasabubu, Lomumba, Katanga, Chombe, one against the other inside. But the neighbors, they didn't enable to build a national home for the Kongi nation. And we are a nation with a history of 4,000 years, with a heritage of 3,300 years. Exodus. Whatever we taught, whatever we are, whatever we contributed, and still we have to fight for the very existence. This is the main question. I relate to the last point that was mentioned in the question of Professor Porat and the answer of my survivor fellow, Dr. Pizarro, Sam. I think that before we ask where was God in the Holocaust, we have to ask where was the man during the Holocaust. To answer about the behavior of God is too complicated for a human being like me. I don't see him. I can't ask him. I am not a prophet. I don't speak to him. I have no dialogue. I can apply to him. I do it three times a day. I know I have an ear and a heart, but I don't receive the answers. It's impossible for me to get the answer, at least an immediate answer. But human beings from all over the world, they are here. I can touch them. I can shake hands with them. I can fight them. I had to ask all the time, where were you? What to apply only where was God? This is too easy to solve the problem. Too easy to escape from the issue. How did it come that a tolerate and an intelligent people like the German nation, even Weimar contract, which we can understand was a contract of defeat, of insultment, but still, to give your vote, your confidence in a corporal from Linetz, Adolf Schickel Gruber, named later Adolf Hitler, and to say that he will bring the redemption for the people, that he is the man of vision, to trust him, to go after him day and night, blind heads, blind eyes, death. Goebbels is the one who gives you the theory of life. Julius Streicher is the culture of Germany, not Goethe, not Schiller, not Heine, not Kant, not Schopenhauer, but Julius Streicher and Adolf Rosenberg, they will teach you a lesson how to behave and what to be. All the time I hear questions about God. Where was God? Where was God? I don't know. Where were we? Take the newspapers of all cultured languages, nations in countries, in Europe, in America, even here. Take the newspapers of the 30s, even the 40s. Look at the front page. Speaking about all kinds of things. In chapter in uh, page number seven, you can find an announcement. Uh, no connection with the Zhitomir community in Ukraine. No telegraphs, no telephones, no post, no mail. What happened to the community of Zhitomir? Number seven. Number one, dealing about sport, about agriculture, about export-import, 
politics, all kinds. Where were we? The world was divided into two, into three parties. One party was the victims. Not only Jewish. All the Jews were victims, but they were vic victims from other nations as well. This was one part. The second part was the murderers, not only the German. We cannot forgive and we cannot forget, but they had all kinds of assistance and supporters from other countries and nations. The third part was the majority of mankind, those who stood on the blood and did nothing, didn't say a word. It was an abnormal period, and an abnormal period to behave normally is abnormal. Not even one window was broken in the White House or in the State Department or in the Pentagon, in Washington, and why, why only Washington? Whatever. In a demonstration of anger, of upset, of people who say, do something. It's an hell. It started with the Jews, but this is not the end. It will go on and on. Did you hear that one window was broken? Von Rath was killed in Paris by Herschel Grinspan. So it creates the Kristallnacht of November 1938. One Herschel Grinspan. There were very few like this. Where were the governments? Till Pearl Harbor, what was by Roosevelt? Look at the books of Ben Hecht, of Bernard Baruch, his first eight. Bernard Baruch, describing this time this dark time, the White House. And even Winston Churchill and the Royal Air Force with all the offers come. The rail state, the railway to Auschwitz, 50,000 Jews a day from Budapest are going to the gas chambers. Stop it at least for a day, two days till they will fix the railway. Bomb it. Two aircrafts. The answer was later on discovered, signed by him as Minister of War. We didn't go to this war in order to save lives of Jews or other nations. We declared this war as a defense war against the Nazi German, the beast, and I promise you that at the moment that they will be defeated. The liquidation of the Jews will stop. Oh, but how many Jews will left? Will survive till then? I don't speak about Marshal Petain and many others. They belong to the second group, the assistants. I speak about the third group. They keeping silent. So if we learn the story, you as teachers, when you come to teach the story, not only of Holocaust, of World War II, because you cannot separate them. Three chapters, chapter now, one. How did it arrive, National Socialist is a party to rule over a cultured nation like the German people, and not only the German, Estreich and many others. How did it come? From at least 1923, when the book My Kampf came out, was published, and no one said nothing. How did it come? Till September 1st, 39. This is chapter number one. Chapter number two is the six years of the war, World War II. And then the third lesson in you teaching is, after 1945 till this very last day, what did we learn out? What is the message? What are the conclusions? How do we have to behave now, knowing that tragedy 
how to behave, what to be, what to do, how to react, that such a horror will never reappear again. Thank you.